Okay. Take one of my sons. Exactly how this man was And those who do not worship him and do not love him more than that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked for. And present that in the day of judgment for Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Chapter 2 or the cow surah al-baqarah with 286 verses is the longest chapter within the last revelation revealed onto the heart of the last messenger of God and within this chapter There are many powerful lessons, many powerful stories, many important and crucial Islamic laws and regulations, many themes. And indeed, it is a chapter that's within every one of its verses. We may stop, ponder, and seek fruitful lessons. Within this chapter lies the most powerful verse within the Holy Quran. Within Surah Al-Baqarah lies Ayatul Kursi, which is the most powerful ayah within the entire Quran. Within this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the abrogation within the Qur'an. Al-Nasikh wal-Mansukh. And the theory of abrogation is specifically mentioned in the 106th verse from Surah Al-Baqarah. And of course, Abrogation is something that you are all familiar with where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala updated the religion of Islam through time. Meaning some verses were revealed, other verses came to complete the message of the prior verse or the previous verse. And Allah introduces this methodology and the 106th ayah within the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 15th ayah of this chapter speaks extensively of the existence of the hypocrites, the munafiqeen within Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly in the 30th ayah of chapter 2 speaks of the notion of khilafah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty is the one that chooses and places the khalifa on the face of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 45th ayah of chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, speaks of the importance of salah and speaks of the importance of sabr. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within this ayah also introduces the mannerism in which we ought to deal with Ahl al-Kitab. The people of the book. Allah speaks of the building of the Kaaba within Surah Al-Baqarah. And the 144th ayah within Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah declares the Kaaba as the Qibla of the Muslims. Similarly, Allah within chapter 2 introduces many Islamic laws and regulations. The laws of inheritance are introduced in chapter 2. Kafarat are also introduced in chapter 2. The laws of Hajj and Sa'i are introduced in chapter 2. The laws of inheritance, the punishment of death, the laws of fasting, and many other laws and regulations in Islam are introduced in chapter 2. Surah Al-Baqarah. So why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though there are extremely important verses in chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, yet entitles this chapter the longest chapter revealed in the last revelation to the heart of the last messenger after an animal? 
كاو بقرة Within the Holy Quran, we find that chapters are named after the most important story, most important figure, and most important theme within that chapter. For example, Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider. Why is it named Al-Ankabut or the spider? It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there uses the anecdote of the spider. The example of the spider web. Even though it does not occupy many verses within Surah Al-Ankabut, but it is the highlight of the message of Surah Al-Ankabut. So Allah entitles that specific chapter after the Ankabut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names another chapter after the ant, the ant a small tiny animal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entitles another chapter al-feel, the elephant, because it introduces the story of the elephant. Another chapter is entitled Jum'ah, Friday. Why? Because Allah introduces the concept of Salat al-Jum'ah, the Friday prayers. Another chapter is entitled the hypocrites, al-munafiqoon. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the affairs of the Hypocrites. Another chapter is entitled Al Nisa because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicates many of its verses to the issues of women. Similarly, this chapter is entitled Al Baqara because the most important story within this chapter is the story of the cow and Bani Israel. And inshallah, this evening we will examine this chapter, the longest chapter within the Holy Quran in the following manner. Number one, we will examine the 65th ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah that speaks of the story of Bani Israel and the day of Saturday. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them after they made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one. Number two, we will examine ayah number 67, which speaks of the story of the cow. Why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Bani Israel to slaughter a cow? What was so special about the cow? And why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified that it has to be this specific cow? And how is it that a, an entire co community can be tested all together and as a community they either succeed or they fail in the test? And finally, we will stop at the 83rd ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, one of the most beautiful ayat within the entire Quran. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا After your loud salawat ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. When we come to the 65th ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, we find that in the Tafasir, it says that Bani Israel came to Musa, Oh Musa, listen, we want you to ask Allah to dedicate one specific day for us where we cannot do anything else besides worship. Any kind of worship. But we don't want to work. We don't want to spend time with the family. We don't want to do anything else. Besides spending quality time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa said, listen. Allah doesn't want that from you. You just take some time out of the day and pray to God. 
Seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to come and dedicate an entire day out of the week. But you know sometimes people try to act holy. And they try to, you know, act like they can endure more than that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked them to do. Some people went, this is recently, some people went to one of the greatest maraja' of our time. And they said to, the, they said to him, O oh, Ayatollah, we want you to tell us some secrets where we can become mystic and spiritual and seek nearness to Allah. He said, there is no secret. Do the halal and don't do the haram. That's it. Can you handle that? That's enough. Do that what you're on to do and don't do that which you're not supposed to do. So Musa kept saying, look, we don't need to do this. They kept saying, no, Musa, you have to ask Allah. So asked Allah. So Musa asked Allah, oh Allah, dedicate a day for Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the day of Saturday, Sabbath for them. So the law became that on the day of Saturday they cannot work. And Bani Israel, they would fish. And they gathered their income by fishing. So immediately they turned into three groups. The first group, which was the small minority of them, they stopped fishing on that day. And they dedicated that day to worship. The second group, they didn't fish, but they left their nets in the water so that they can trap the fish. And the next day, they would pick up the fish. And the third group, no, they didn't care. They just went fishing. They went about their business. They can care less that this day is now an obligation for them to take off from work. You see, brothers and sisters, sometimes we're quick to make promises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we're in a situation where we make promises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as soon as we make that promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to challenge our faith and our iman in that particular area where we have made a promise to him Allah says, how true are you in that promise you've made for me? For example, some people make a promise that look, starting from this Friday, I'm going to observe the hijab. And the day before, she gets a job offer. And this job offer is not the type of job that goes hand in hand with hijab. Here's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will you do? Will you keep that promise to Allah? Or will you delay the promise? Or will we just forget about the entire promise we made to Allah? We make a promise that this year I will definitely go to hajj. I will observe hajj. Because my job is in a way where I can take 10, 15 days off from my work can go to Hajj this year. Immediately after we make such a commitment and a promise, the job changes. There is a better pay. We can't take days off work. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges our iman and our faith and our promise in that exact area. Some people decide that this year I'm going to donate some of my wealth for a charitable project. And immediately, somehow, his dream car is on sale. It's right in front of him. He passes by the dealership every day. What do I do? Do I take that money and put it on the down payment for the car? Or do I fulfill my promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is exactly what happened with Bani Israel. They were tested. And we ask ourselves, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a story of Bani Israel that on Saturday some of them went fishing and others didn't go fishing? And some of them 
they just tried to slightly cheat the system or they just left their nets in the water. The answer is, history repeats itself. This story repeated itself every single day around the world and within history. Therefore, there were three groups of people when Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was also in Karbala. The 72 people which were extreme small minority and they stood with Imam Hussein. Just like the small minority of the people of Bani Israel stopped fishing. And they took that promise seriously and they did what they had to do. The second group of people were the silent ones. They didn't care. We're not going to join Hussein. We're not going to stop the killers of Imam Hussein. We're going to sit and watch. And there was a third group. The same group that went outright fishing are the same group that came in the bright light, daylight on the 10th of Muharram and slaughtered Imam al Hussein. And that is why those ayat are placed within the Quran. So when we read the Quran, we don't just read it as a story. We try to make the story relevant to our lives, relevant to our understanding and relevant to the message of the Ahlul Bayt. The message of Ahlul Bayt and the message of the Quran go hand in hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces this story and then immediately introduces another story from Bani Israel, which is the story of the cow. What was the story of the cow? There was a rich man, a wealthy man, who was killed in Bani Israel. And Bani Israel were 11 tribes. So they began to accuse one another that this tribe killed this man. Another tribe says, no, this tribe killed this man. And there was a huge issue. So they came to Musa. Musa, who killed this man? If you're a prophet, if you're a messenger of God, tell us who killed this man. What did Musa tell them? Inna Allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqara. Allah orders you to kill a sheep, to kill a, a cow, to slaughter a cow. Huzwa? Are you joking, Musa? We're telling you who killed this man. You're telling us to go and kill a cow? So Musa says, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You want to know who killed the man? Go kill a cow. They said, why? He said, you take the blood of that sacrifice and you put it on that man. Through a miracle from Allah, the man will speak and tell us who killed him. So they came mocking Musa. How could that be possible? Now there was a group of people who knew exactly how this man was killed. Listen to this. They wanted to delay this process. They wanted to delay this process. So they came to Musa. They said, okay, we'll slaughter the cow. But tell us. What age should, be, should the cow be? Should it be an old cow? A young cow? Small cow? Big cow? So Musa told them it should not be too old when it's dying and it shouldn't be baby. It should be a medium sized cow. Go kill a cow. They went and this group of people again, okay, how can we delay this process even more? Musa, what is the color of the cow? Just go kill a cow. Musa, tell us what is the color of the cow. So Musa tells them, Allah says it has to be a yellow, bright yellow cow. Wow. Bright yellow cow. So instead of going and looking for that cow, this group of individuals delayed the process even more. Musa, what type of medium size, bright yellow cow should it be? Is it the type that gives milk? Is it the type that's ready for slaughter? Is it the type that works on the farm? <clears throat> Have you seen some people sometimes in some communities, and because this is a community issue, it's not a personal issue, when there is something that is about to happen, something good that's about to happen, 
And they're always saying, you know, if this project takes off, we'll be the first people to donate. We will be the first people to give hundreds of thousands of dollars. As soon as the project is about to take off, they don't want to give. So what do they do? They delay the process. And delay the process. And delay the process. How so? This building is too small. Let's go find another building. Okay, we find another building. This building doesn't have parking. We will run into... Okay, we find a building with park. This building is not in a good neighborhood. Let's go and find another building. They find another building in a good neighborhood. This one is too expensive. We should find something that's... And the process is delayed and delayed and delayed. And you find sometimes you go to certain communities. Ten years have passed and everything is exactly the same in that community. The carpet is the same. The color of the building is the same. The faces are the same. The bathrooms are the same. The camera is the same. The sound system is the same. Why? Because every time they want to take a step forward, there is that group of people who are there, who completely delay the process because they claim that we want to be part of this project. We want to be part of the success of our community. Yet they are the only hurdle. Stopping the entire community from success. And this is why Allah introduces this notion within the Quran. That there are going to be some raw and apples within every community. Get rid of them. Don't listen to them. Excel as a community. Bring success to yourselves. And some people sometimes, they don't do it on purpose. They don't do it on purpose. But they are also amongst those who delay the process of something good that's about to happen. Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Hasten, be quick. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't delay anything. Sometimes some people, when they want to do something good, it's not in their hand. Because there is so, there is so much attachment to the dunya, their mind starts making different types of excuses. And that is why in the du'as of the month of Ramadan, what do we say? Ilahi akhraj hubbad dunya min qalbi. If you want to do something good, and that good will last for you in this life, in your grave, and in the hereafter, don't delay it. Because today you are able to do it. Tomorrow there is no guarantee that you'll be able to do this. And keep it as part of your hasanat. And present that in the day of judgment for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I tell you brothers and sisters, listen to me. Whether you're sitting in this hall or you're watching on your television screens, wherever you are in the world today, listen to me. We as Muslims and the followers of Imam Hussein are the ambassadors of the message of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, And we are responsible towards the message of Imam Hussein. And we should not take the message of Imam Hussein as something that is temporary, 10 days out of the entire year, where we selfishly gather for 10 nights and we do things the way we desire. We do things that remind us of Iraq and Iran and Pakistan and India and Lebanon. While the message of Imam Hussein isn't just for the Shia, it is for all Muslims. Have we tried to present the message of Imam Hussein to all Muslims? What have we done? That is one. The message of Imam Hussein is not only for Muslims, but it is for every single human being. What have we done to present the message of Imam Hussein to all human beings? And don't think that, okay. I have to invite every person that I know on the 10 nights of Muharram so they can come and sit and... No, 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 no. You can invite people obviously to come and listen. 
But the message of Imam Hussein is 365 days out of the year. What have we done for Imam Hussein in the 365 days out of the year? And the only way to do that is if we strive together as a community with knowledge. Wallah, Imam Hussein is not looking for people to be driven by emotions and it is knowledge. It is the knowledge of Ahl al Bayt and the Ilm of Ahl al Bayt that it if, is, if it is presented in the correct manner, then change will come. And any change that you present within your community today and lasts and lasts for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 100 years, 200 years will be your sadaq al-jariya until the day of judgment. You're in your grave for 100 years. If you are part of a change for Ahl al-Bayt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you on daily basis within your grave. When I die and they place me in my grave, the inheritors will say, what did he leave behind? How many castles? How many millions? How many cars? How many businesses? How many children? And the malaika will say, forget about all of that. Mada qaddam? How has he decorated this grave? What is he presenting to Allah today in his book of A'mal? How, he, how will he live here? Will he live in prosperity, in joy, in happiness? This is all up to us today. As a community. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, Go and slaughter this cow. They went, they found the cow, and they slaughtered the cow. They took the blood, they put the blood on the man. The man spoke. Who killed you? Says, my cousin killed me. Your cousin killed you? Why? This man apparently was very wealthy. He had a daughter who his cousin wanted to marry. So number one, he marries the daughter. And number two, he receives all the money and inheritance after this man dies. This man didn't allow his daughter to marry his cousin. So the man came and killed him to inherit the money because at that time women would not inherit. And his cousin was the only blood relation that he had. So he killed him. Now why is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses heavily on the issue of the cow? The issue of the cow also has a story. The cow belonged to a poor family. The family consisted of a father and a, a father and a son, and the rest had passed away. The father was extremely old, and his son was extremely polite to him. One day, as the father was ill, he was sleeping. And he was carrying the key to the safe box. A traveler came and he told this young man of a business deal. This young man went to the safe box to take out that which needs to be sold where he would make 1,000 dinars off that business deal. He saw his father sleeping. He wanted to wake up his father and he said, no, I would rather see my father resting than wake him up and make the 1,000 dirhams, dinars. So he didn't wake up his father. The man traveled. And he didn't make the 1,000 dinars. 
immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his blessings. Wallah, brothers and sisters, Allah is the razaq. Allah is the one that blesses our wealth. Allah is the one that blesses our family. Allah is the one that blesses what we have. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لِي عِلْمٌ بِمَوْضِعِ رِزْقِي وَإِنَّمَا أَطْلُبُهُ بِخَطَرَاتٍ تَخْطُرُ عَلَى قَلْبِي فَأَجُولُ فِي طَلَبِهِ الْبُلْدَانِ فَأَنَا فِي مَا أَنَا طَالِبٌ كَالْحَيْرَانِ Yes, I try. I travel. I endure difficulty. I do what I need to do, but in the end of the day, وَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ عِلْمَهُ عِنْدَكَ وَأَسْبَابَهُ بِيَدِكَ I know that you are the razaq, you are the one that gives. So his father woke up and he told him, Oh father, there was a man who wanted him. So his father says, I only own this cow. But I'm going to give you this cow as a gift. Allah immediately then tells Bani Israel, you have to go and buy this cow. Because it was the only yellow cow that fit the criteria that Bani Israel were looking for. This man, he was also smart. His cow was worth 1,000 dinars. He told them, I'll only sell it for 70,000. And in the end of the day, they came and they bought it from him for 70,000 dinars. He wanted to make a business deal that would give him 1,000. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned the tables and gave him 70,000. Brothers and sisters, there are certain issues within our lives that if we were to do them and observe them, they will bring infinite blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into our lives. One of them, one of them is kindness to our parents, whether they are alive or they are no longer with us. And that is why I have decided to complete tonight's discussion with the 83rd ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah. وَقَضَى رَبُّكْ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Let us examine this ayah after your loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Can we have another salawat so the brothers sitting in the back can move a little forward, we can see them all. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ah, move forward, move forward as much as you can. Ahsantum, ahsantum. What does it mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكْ And Allah has ordained it to be. You see, Allah says, He has created a system. He has made the system where there is no other way besides this way. وَقَضَى رَبُّكْ that you only worship him. How? What is worship? Worship is to do that which Allah tells us to do, not to do that which Allah tells us not to do. That is worship. Now let's come to our day-to-day -day lives and evaluate our notion of worship. Can we be people that believe in Allah but yet not worship Him according to this ayah? We believe in Him. We say like, Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'een. But we do not worship Allah. Can that be true according to the Quran? According to this ayah where Allah says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Look at what the Quran is trying to tell me and you. Let's come to our wealth. We said, worship 
is when Allah tells us to do something, we do it. Allah tells us not to do something and we don't do it. So we obey and we don't do that which we're not supposed to do according to what Allah tells us. Now we come to our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِيهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَاتَّقَوْ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ سورة الحديد Allah says when it comes to your wealth, that which you have extra, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِيهِ Give from that which you have extra. Allah has given you, you have extra now, give that for the sake of Allah. That shows your iman, that shows your piety, that shows your dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now when we come to our wealth, if we obey Allah here and give, that's iman, that's obedience, that's worship of Allah. If we keep that wealth, so the number only grows larger. It's just a, it's just a number. Some people, they have so much that within their lifetime, they cannot spend it anymore. Within their lifetime, they cannot spend it anymore. Allah says about those people, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إذ قضي الأمر يا رسول الله tell them of the day of regret where they can no longer come back they see on that day everyone's regretful the ones who didn't do anything good obviously they'll have regret but even the good doers they say we wish we did more now, if we were to be given the same chance, we would give everything we have for the sake of Allah, but we cannot go back. Why did we save? Brothers and sisters, if you're keeping it for your children, good. But just like Allah gave you, we'll give your children. And if Allah decides to take everything you've left for your children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do so. On that day, where a mother, a mother, imagine how close a mother is to her child, the child will come to his mother. Oh mother, give me one of your hasanat. No. Okay, take one of my sayyat. No. The mother goes to her child, take one of my sins, or give me one of your good deeds. Think of that day. Prepare yourself for that specific day. When it comes to our wealth, do we worship Allah or do we worship our wealth? That's one. When it comes to our children, do we worship Allah or our children? Wallah, some people... For the sake of their children, they're willing to do the haram. Tomorrow, you're the one that's going to be answering the questions. You're the one that's going to answer to Allah. Just because your child needs this car, or needs this lavish lifestyle, don't take it upon yourself to jeopardize your akhirah because of your children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says your children are a test. Don't fail in this test. When they're young, don't say, Allah, haram. She's nine, ten years old. Let's not wake her up for salah. So when she becomes 15, 16, we'll teach her how to do salah. Well, at that time, she's not, she's not going to listen to you. When you know your son, it's 1, 2 a.m. and he's out doing what he shouldn't be doing. Don't say, they're young. It's okay. Let them have fun. I'm not saying have your children on a lockdown, take their phone, iPads, pr imprison them, make their lives miserable. But this is not what I'm saying. You see, we have two types of attitude. Either we let go of everything... 
and the parents become like ATM machines. You only, hi daddy, give me a, $500. Okay, here you go. That's the only time we come to our parents. And the parents don't care. Or no, there is the strict type of parents. You cannot go out, you cannot breathe, you cannot live, you cannot leave. The, nothing, nothing, nothing. Where Ahl al-Bayt taught us to speak to our children. To admonish our children. To spend quality time with our children. To build their characters. To give them self-esteem. To develop strong decision-making within them. And then let them go to the society. Then you have nothing to be afraid of. For your children. For your family members. But if I have had shortcomings in developing their characters and who they are, then yes, I will always be afraid and I have to think that if I lock them in the house, then I am protecting my children. But that is not the case. When it comes to our children, do we, obey, do we worship Allah or do we worship them? Do we obey Allah or do we obey them? When it comes... Some people to their own pride and to their own self, self-infatuation. Do you worship and obey your own pride and your own self or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.